And welcome back to Coast to Coast. George Norrie with you, Linda Selvin with us. Linda, what do you think about curses? Are they real? Yes, absolutely, George. Absolutely. They can, um, people in our life now can juju us, put a curse on, wish us bad luck. There are some spells available out there that I don't recommend people going online to learn because a lot of them will backfire. Yep. But there are some negative ways to hurt people, uh, prevent them from achieving or anything they want. Um, there, There's gin jars, there's the gin spells, and Rosemary, your friend, you know, the author, for years wrote about curses with the gin. Yeah, um, Rosemary Guiley. Also, yeah, yeah, I had dinner with her a few times. She'd be on your show. I mean, it was, you know, gosh, it's what, 10 years ago already? Miss her. All the good um, ones have passed on, Linda. Well, we're still here. It's hard to say who's better or worse off. I mean, let's not go there. But, yeah, we're, a lot of good ones have, uh, have gone, but some of us have more to do here before we go there. But um, the curses often come from past lives or generational curses, as they're called, say, like six, eight generations past. So be a great, 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 great grandfather or great grandmother may have had something in Europe go wrong or Asia or wherever, Africa, and they wanted to curse the family. And I have undone curses that I have traced back several generations from one side of the family or the other as to why somebody in this lifetime, which is karma, has so much bad luck, negativity, depression, one thing after another. I didn't know all this prior to, you know, opening up it's not what I learned as an epidemiologist, no. But that's where I've learned spiritually and metaphysically. All this stuff is real. Um, I get phone calls about curses. And I'll be honest, if I don't sense that they're in any danger or wrapped up or sealed or binded by something, I'll say, no, you don't have a curse. But if you want to cleanse, this is my suggestion. Or if you need more peace, this is my suggestion. Then I come across some people that are heavily, heavily curse it's like a black coat and i want to help them untangle that to get out of like the dungeon or the manhole you know that they really have something um it's it's not as easy to pinpoint um some people i i do know an exorcist that i work with and she detected somebody being cursed in the womb so a lot of times oh, the mother's family, yeah, could have been cursed. So the mother giving birth could have given birth to a child who then lived a cursed life. Not that there was anything wrong, because the person's married and everything, but she has had a lot of struggle. But where does the struggle come from? So metaphysically and spiritually, you learn to identify it. I don't do exorcisms. I, I don't go to the dark, but this one woman is excellent at it, and I know people have worked with her, and some people have that gift, you know, everybody's got their own talent, and we're multifaceted people, you're not just a talk show host, we know that, that's what you do, you've loved this kind of stuff since you were a kid, have you ever had your own psychic experiences, or do you think it's more intuitive, George, you're extremely intuitive, obviously, but have you ever really experienced predicting something psychically? A little okay. bit, but I I cross the line between intuitiveness and psychicness. To me, it might be more than one of the same. What do you think? It's not, and that's how I was trying to define it at the beginning of the hour last hour, that most people who think they're psychic, it's really their intuition. It's like you get on the freeway and you think, oh, I should have stayed on the boulevard, and then you get on the freeway, there's an accident. So you right. trusted your intuition. The difference is the psychic can see the future for someone else. They can ah, see what's okay. going to happen. Uh, point in fact, on October, well, last month, I was supposed to go. I had a trip booked to Washington, D.C. and I was going to meet a friend of mine. She and her husband live in Newport News. She was going to take the train up and meet me. And something said, I don't want to go. Something's going to happen. I better not go. So I canceled my trip. And the day I was due in, 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 in D.C. is when the war broke out. Wow. I would not have wanted to be in Washington the day that Israel was attacked. And then that Wednesday, Dulles Airport was shut down for a while. So I would have been freaked out if all this Oh, was yeah, absolutely. The capital, it's... yeah. But I felt it. I felt it. And um, 
I wrote a song years ago and about the city catching fire, and then it was that I think three weeks later we had the Rodney King breakout with the with in, the, in Los Angeles. Yeah, here, uh, I mean, I, that's intuition, but it could also be psychic. But as a psychic and a professional. When somebody, let's say Susie's calling me from Delaware and she wants to know about her husband and that's all I need is his name and birthday and I'm off and running about their relationship, his emotions, how he treats her, his money, if he's cheating. I mean, I just go on a few words and I can determine where they're at, what's going to happen, and usually within time, yeah, it unfolds. And you don't hold Um, back, do you? No, not when I'm working, no. I, I can't lie. My job, I will not read death. And I don't predict pregnancies. Those are two things I don't touch. You don't Especially do that. we do not do that. No. Let's go to, to God. Let's go to the phones. Yeah. Rich in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. You know that area. Hey Rick, go ahead. Yeah. Been there. Hi, how are you hey, guys? Rick. Hi, Rick. I uh, I've called in a few times. I know George uh, probably got sick of hearing me now, but <laughs> um, when I heard that you were from Pitts or your father was from Pittsfield, I said, Well My I have to father- call you, so. Yeah, and my grandfather, um, where there's now the um, old age, like a senior home that used to be a theater on the main street, across the street, my grandfather had a a men's clothing store called Salvin's back in the 40s, I think, 30s and 30s, 30s and 40s. Way back. I was there in 1999, and what, about a mile and a half up the road, there's the lake. It's beautiful. It is rich. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's uh, that's still there, the Ralph, Ralph Florio uh, Senior Center. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's where the theater was. How can I help you? Well, I've, I've called in a couple of times. Um, I've been dealing with, like, a mold toxicity issue, like health issue that's really kind of destroyed my life. Um, and it's, you know, put me in financial stress. And, and, um, and also I was a little worried. I know you mentioned the curses recently. And you, if anyone had a doubt about things happening in three, I think you put that to rest. But, um, you know, my, my wife had three things happen to her. She, she fell at work, broke her humerus, oh. and she was hit uh, She was hit at a red light. I went to a red light. Um, that was so last September, and then in April she was hit at a red light. And oh then uh, in July, she, yeah, she fell down our last two stairs in our cellar and broke her tibia and her wrist. Oh, my gosh. So, uh, yeah, so that's added to it. But what are you doing so. now? I have something to go back to the mold that will detox your body from it, and the glyphosate, which is huge right now. Everybody's trying to detox from the metals and the, um, the, the, the what's going on with the poison on the food. If you want information and want the help, I have a product that will successfully probably detox the mold. How does that work, uh, Linda? Oh, there's a product that it's it's all natural. It's it's um, all nutrition, but there's this one product that's in capsule form that detoxes the glyphosates, the mold, and everything that's in our body, so that you're actually over a 90-day period, we get rid of parasites, we um, nutritionalize the body, build the muscle, but also eliminate the the metals and and well, the weed killer. You know, it's 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 all the glyphosates that are being sprayed on our food, the vegetation. The, Fruits and vegetables. They're even inoculating animals now. It's 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 really bad what's going on with all of that. So I've gotten involved with the company, and I started in June, and I can tell my body's totally cleansed on the inside because I can feel it. And uh, we do get rid of mold. They've had a few people, even um, some autistic children, because of the metals in the brain, and they're starting to think. One's starting to talk. There's a lot. I can't because it's not FDA approved. Right, it's, I get it's, you. It's alternative, but there's some help out there. Mold toxicity is horrible, isn't it? It's awful. It gives, you can't sleep and you can't breathe. And is it from your home? Was it from something in the attic or the, uh, was it in your walls, Rick? It was, um, it was actually in my basement. We had a finished basement, and it, we had really... Oh, mold. oh, so the damp. Dampness. Yeah. Well, it was like some strange things that happened. I am also an empath and a paranormal investigator, but like um, I think I said this last one of the last psychics I, I spoke to um, one time when there, there was water down there, and I went down there trying to deal with the water, and it was like two feet of water in there. Oh, jeez. And I saw, like, and I saw tiny little, like... Yeah, and I saw these little black 
like shadow creatures down there too. Like, but they're like. Well, yeah, small. things grow in the water. Of course they do. But if you want help detoxing and really getting rid of it and not be sick anymore, you can contact me off there. All right, through your website. You have a toll free number as well. Do you I want do. to give that out? Sure. It's eight 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 five zero nine. 1077 is strictly voicemail. Leave your name, area code, and phone number, and I'll get back with you. And especially because of Georgia's show, a lot of times there'll be many calls. So give me a day or two, but I'll call everybody back. 888 509 1077. Thanks, Rick. Let's go to Brenda in Sacramento, California. Hello, Brenda. Hi, Brenda. Brenda's gone. She disappeared. Poof. Let's, <laughs> let's try Rod in Syracuse, New York. Hey, Rod, go ahead. How you doing? Uh, can you Hi, ask her? How you doing? Uh, I lost my wife about a year and a half ago today. What was her first name? I'm sorry. What was her name? Carol. Carol. And I wonder if she's got any message or if she got yeah, to Yeah, I do. I've got her immediately. My middle name is Carol, so I can identify. I can see her, and she's got a real um, – she's got – like, uh, cheeky. She was cheeky. She had a full face of, of a smile. She wants you to stop worrying. She wants you to stop worrying. She knows, she says, I miss you and I know you miss me. She wants you to stop worrying. So whatever, if it's about the money or worrying about if she's okay, if she made it and what you're going to do about yourself, but you're worried about her being gone more so than worrying about taking care of you in life. So switch hmm. that um, attachment the grief will take a long time. I understand that, and I can help you process it quicker than doing it on your own. But she's more of like a guardian angel. You hear her sometimes. You see a shadow or you might smell her cologne or something. She's around you all the time, but she wants you to stop worrying. What are you worrying about all the time? She want, what, what is it that you can't stop thinking about with this? Do you feel guilty? We were together for 39 years. It's a long time, Rod. They were together for 39 years, Linda. Oh, wow. Yeah, your whole life. You lost your partner. No, no, no. She wants you to stop worrying. She, she, she's fine. She wants you to get on with your life. And even though you're still grieving and crying, she wants you to release it. She's not, I mean, she's not coming back, but you have to go on living. And you're, you're not allowing yourself that. I have found that most of the dead want us to have a prosperous life, don't they? They do. But we grieve. We hurt. We live for them. Or when my mom died, and we've talked about this, there was a time I wanted to die because of the pain and the loss. Or like last year I lost my dog, and that was horrible. Oh, it hurts. It hurts, of it course. Hurts. Dogs, cats, turtles, people. But that grief sometimes is so overwhelming unless you have the right help that you don't want to live. It's like, why should I live if there's no one here for me? Well, you start to become more independent and you find other things to believe in. It's a process. It's not going to be, okay, gone Thursday and I'm okay on Friday. It doesn't work that way. But they don't want to see us suffer. They want us to be free of their pain because a lot of them were in pain and they're finally free of the cancer or whatever. But we don't have to live in sorrow, missing the short time we're actually here on the planet alive. We have to be grateful that we still have our life. I, I, I was watching the news and, and you know, the, the babies that they abandoned in the Gaza hospital, they just left, they left them there because there's no electricity. So I start looking at the souls. You know, and I know a lot of yeah. psychics are, are reading what's going on over there, and it's because we, we can feel it. You can feel the fear and feel the anxiety and feel the lost souls of how they transition because it's different than dying of a disease or a chronic illness. It's, it's, it was unexpected. So they're all different, but with this man, yeah, she just wants you to stop worrying. It's all I keep hearing, stop worrying. She's fine. You're fine. Keep going. Let's and go to Lori. Love to love. He yeah. has to love again. Brighton, Hi, Illinois. Lori. Hi, Lori. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. Hi, Linda. Um, well, I was wondering, you answered one question already. Did you, do you believe that people can be cursed by other people? Yes, absolutely. Relatives, friends, uh, jealous lovers, workers. Oh, yes. They come from all angles. 
I feel there's a lot of jealousy in the world, but um, what I want to ask then is do you feel that I have a curse on me, and can I get rid of it if there is? Let me look. And while you're looking, why do you think you've been cursed, Lori? Because she can't get anything she wants in life. She feels stuck, right? Well, just a, a lot of bad... I have a feeling you had a great-grandmother. What country did your family originate in? Well, that's a good question because my son's gone on the thing where you yeah, find out your yeah. past. Like, um, yeah, ancestry. Italy, Italy. Um, yeah, there's a European. Let me do my work. I got it. it's not it's not American. It's not U.S. soil. It's from another the great grandmother. This is from your mother's side. And if it's Italy or Spain or France, if it's if it's more during the Renaissance era, so we're looking at, what, the 1700s, 1600s, and something went wrong in a fight with the family of which I kind of explained this an hour ago, that they can curse the children and future generations. I don't know how many women ended hmm. up in your family, but the whole lineage of the female side are the ones that have suffered, not the men, the women. So, yes, I can help you. You can reach me out there. I'll be glad to teach you what to do to break it. Yep. Can, can you tell, Linda, if people have been cursed just by talking to them? No. Most of the time I can pick up on something or I'll hear it, but in this situation, the more she was talking, that's why I said, what family, I mean, where were they from? Because I knew it wasn't here. It was nobody at school or work. It wasn't new. I, I, I could feel that it was distant and it was older. So that's why I wanted to get off the, pla- uh, off the planet. I wanted to get off the continent to see where I could trace it. And as soon as she said Italy, because I was feeling more renaissance uh, timing, to Italy, and I'm going to say, again, it's the women of that family or however many generations passed, something went wrong in an argument, Mm -hmm. and however they did it, I don't know, I don't know know what their process was, but I know how to remove it. You know, last time I was on your show, I met a wonderful man from um, either Quebec or Toronto, I can't remember, and he had a curse, and we, he did the candles. And he called to thank me because it was gone. It works. He yeah. was freed. Yep. Well, why do curses carry over from lineage and lineage? Because a lot of the times, however they're done, I don't do that kind of black magic, and I don't know what form it was, but a lot of times they will say, okay, we're going to curse the family for the next, you know, 10 generations because you did this or you cheated or you lied. So however they did it back in the old days, they'll just jinx the the future generation so however many years it takes to go through each time that lineage like in our family i think there was an eight year i mean an eight generational curse from my mom's side and i had that broken but so i understood that and that's when i started getting into investigating it as a career portion a portion of my career having experienced some of it how they did it i don't know why they do it it's usually anger jealousy or because they don't want to see that person get more than they thought they should have had it's usually a jealousy thing well screw you you know all right we're going to come back and take final calls in a moment on coast to coast am and welcome back george nori with linda sullivan linda would you recommend somebody who has just horrible luck they haven't been cursed but their luck is just running horrible what do they do I was just going to say, I want your listeners to know not everybody's cursed. It doesn't, it's not that prevalent, not to freak out. But we do have challenges and obstacles and bad luck. Yes, we have growth. So I have a set of candles called Good Luck Power, which removes blocks, obstacles, negativity, curses, resistance, or whatever, whether it's the job, communication, and the love life, even a health issue. I had somebody on my show recently who's uh, done candles for about 15 years. He's a health executive, major corporate guy, and the miracles that have happened in his life, they're all on my sites. But people who are struggling can do the good luck power, and it'll lift. Like in 15 days, things start to happen. It's it's, it's spirit. It's magic. And, yes, it's it's what I do. And that's where it's still a woo-woo, and I never believed it. 
but it's real. And I want your listeners to know not everybody's got, like, a generational curse. And there's also business curses, you know. There's some people that just skyrocket to success and others can't for the life of them, you know, light a match. And a lot of it is like a business curse. So there's stuff out there. It's just discerning what it really is. That's my job. Too. Why Why do the candles seem to work? Oh, if I knew the answer, it wouldn't be magic. <laughs> but there's oils, certain oils. It's like cooking. If you're making a banana bread, chocolate chip cookies, and a Caesar salad, you've got three different recipes for three different foods. Mine work because of the formulas of oils. You get four bottles of oil with the three candles plus herbs and then some powders that are imported from outside the country. And then I teach people to write what's called a petition, which I don't discuss on the air, and then it gets burned. So it's the whole alchemy of the process. And like I explained earlier, the candle's like the soul of man, and then the wick, which becomes the flame, which is the light, which is God. It's how the whole um, process burns and gets out to the universe and nine out of ten times it's going to happen but don't burn one set of say soulmate to bring in the love of your life and if after you know 15 days you don't meet that person don't complain that they didn't work right. you got to do more but i've seen people get married over the last several years you know six eight ten sets they're married they got kids i even performed wedding for one of the couples it's there just and you don't have to believe that's what i love about mine you don't have to do anything you can be skeptical and you'll still have something happen positive Let's back to the phones blake in bakersfield yeah. california is with us hey blake welcome to the program hey how's it going guys good, good blake. thank you how are you good hey i got in an argument earlier with someone and he texted me and he said if you don't like me, I'm going to give you back bud. And my gonna get back, He's going to give you back what? Bad luck. Oh, no, he's not that powerful. He's threatening you, but he's not powerful enough. Don't believe that. When people do that, they're more just angry. But he doesn't have any type of gift or power or um, ability to hurt you. No. If, if, you believe when, the, if you believe they have the power, then could something happen to you? Psychologically, we can create it. Yes, I would agree to that point that sometimes we can manifest it. But if you're really sensitive, a lot of the times you can let somebody under your skin, as the term would say, and, and, you, can, and, and you can make it happen because they said so. But I can tell you right now, just by what this guy said, I don't feel any energy from that. But there are people where they can threaten and they can throw the curse or the hex on somebody because I've witnessed it myself. And um, it's not fun. Certain people do have that thing that they can hurt. Mm -hmm. I can help remove it. I can help remove it. If you want protection, I've got protection candles. You want to get rid of anything, I have something called rebound. You push it back. I've got something for shut up to shut them up, you know, because they're backstabbing. There's something for everybody. Why would somebody want it? Why would somebody want to curse somebody? Linda. Because they're jealous or they don't want them to be in love or find the house or, you know, they're making more money or they got the guy, they got the girl or um, this one was the prom queen or that one got married to somebody that the other girl was really in love with. It's, it's more of a jealousy thing more than anything. Or like I think in the girl that we, we had on earlier at the, this hour with the Italian connection, not for lack yeah, of a better word, yeah. I got more of like an argument in the family and somebody got really – angry and whatever they were able to conjure up or do they jujued the women i didn't get the men i got the females and that was a female that called in it was her old lineage I got them all so whatever they yeah but i don't know how long it lasts sometimes it'll go three four generations sometimes it'll i've seen it go eight nine i think it, the longest i ever saw it was a 13 year or i mean a 13 generation pattern where i could trace it and that's not with Ancestry.com. It's me psychically getting all the timing. Let's go to Everett, Michigan. Chelsea's with us. Hey, Chelsea, go ahead. Hello. Hi there. Hi. How are... um, what can I do for you? Um, well, thank you for taking my call. Um, after my mom died around 11 years ago, my life um, and everything that I worked for was like completely um, derailed. And fast forward... A bit. I find myself taking care of my grandma now, and 
though I love and cherish this, this time with her, I care for her 24-7, and I'm just looking for a little guidance on how I can get some financial security when this chapter is over. Are you Well, when it's over, we can discuss it. You can always call me. We can look at it. What are you trained to do or what do you want to do? What's your birthday? How old are you? I'm, a, um, I'm 36. My birthday is 7, 29, Okay, so for the last decade or so, you've sacrificed and given up for your mom and your grandmother. You've been the caregiver. You've been the, you've been the one to take care of everybody. So by the time that time comes where you're free to be on your own again, whether you go into the profession or you go back to school or you get a job, something will open up. Don't just turn that fear into faith and know that you're being of service. You're, you're going to be rewarded down the road. A lot of times we sacrifice for our loved ones, and then if they're gone, you go, well, why did I do that? But you're, you've got a gift, and for whatever reason, this love was there and the pain, but you're doing it. And then something else will open. You've got plenty of time. You're only in your 30s. You've got your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. You've got a long way to go. Don't worry about it. Deal with it when it comes, okay? Or you can start studying for something now, real estate, or if you go back to school, whatever you want to do. You've got the time. Find your passion. Does that help you, Chelsea? Okay, thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. You're welcome. Next up, we've got Brandon in Rice, Texas. Take it away. Hi, Brandon. Hello, how are you? Good to have you with hey, us. You? Go ahead. I'm great. I uh, appreciate you taking my call. Uh, first time caller in. Um, currently going through, about to get into Oklahoma. Uh, first off, Greg, I, I appreciate you and all your great shows. They're really entertaining while I'm traveling the country, delivering everybody's needs. And Linda, it's uh, first time hearing you on the radio and uh I find it really fascinating because you, uh, you talk about a lot of, you know, things that I once was very skeptical about, and <laughs> until I met my, until I, uh, I met my wife, and my wife is actually a, uh, a medium and an empath, and uh-huh. we don't really say that she's psychic, but um, her friends she come to her a lot yeah. for uh, guidance, and I've yeah. witnessed yeah, her to the other side. I've, I've witnessed her predict things with her friends, and she she warns them, "You better not do that, or this is yep. going to happen, and whatnot." And what? Yep. None of them listen to her, so it always happens. <laughs> then they come but, back um, for more. Yeah, and uh, I find it very uh, happenstance that I just happened to catch you on the radio tonight, and it's very interesting to hear from the other callers and everything else. Uh, so I just wanted to say that and get that out of the way. Um, my question for you is, it's kind of a bit of a, a happy story. Uh, my dad was adopted at, at pretty much birth, and he's nearing 70 years old now, and who his biological mother was. Uh, but we never knew who his biological father was until recently, and uh, we've find both of his half on each side of the family. So we've kind of linked the family back together. Um, however, his mother, uh, Joanne Smith, and she died uh, in 1960 Hawaii, and his father was Douglas Ray Phillips. Uh, he recently passed away a few years ago in 2016. What's the question, please? I was wondering if you're able to one of them, and if you are able to pick up anything from Joanne, uh, I'd love to know if you're able to pick up what happened to her, and she knows. I have the father able- more than the than the mother for some reason, because even when you mentioned that um, he had I, before you mentioned he passed away, that you that you found him, I knew he was gone, and he's the one that has more of a stronghold here. I don't know what happened to her other than I get a heart attack or something in the cardiovascular area of her chest. It could have been pulmonary, which is lungs, of course, but there was something um, of ill health within her body. The other one, um, did the father smoke? 
because I'm, I'm getting a lot of smoke around him. He was jovial, but he had a, either a drinking problem or he was depressed. I don't know why they gave him up, gave her up for adoption, but um, there was a sadness with this guy, and I think he wanted to make up for it at the end, which is what the happy story really is in finding them before they died. Does that help, Brandon? Sure. I, I believe so. Uh, I really don't know much about him. We're actually going to be meeting up with uh, my dad's half sister from his father's side on December yeah. 1st. You're going to find out some cool things. You really are. It's not going to be a sad story, but I think this man suffered the loss. Again, it's a loss. So after you have the meeting, give me a call and bring me up to date as to what happened. Let's go to first-time caller Herman in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Hey, Herman, go ahead, sir. Hey, how you doing, George? Thanks for taking my call. You right. and Linda, big fan of yours. Thank you. Uh, listen to a lot of your shows, Beyond Belief, the Gaia with uh, Cosmic Disclosure. Big fan. Perfect. But uh, I was just hoping to uh, get Linda to, to give me a, a, a reading. All right. Regarding what? Hey. Herman, what would you like, money, your career, your love life? Give me one topic. A uh, career would be great. What are you doing right now? There's changes coming at the first of the year, more towards, I would say, March, April. You're going to be making a almost like a 180. I think you want out of what you're doing or you're going to promote into something totally different. There's also a creative venture, a project that you're going to finally stop procrastinating uh, of, of participating and making it happen, but it looks more time, more like springtime. What is this that, you're, that your goals are? changing what is it that you're leaning towards what is this uh i mean i at some point i want to be you know my own my own boss, boss your own boss so you're going to segue into creating that there's something like a promotion or um an advancement so you can start now but even with the holidays you're not going to have the time but if you want to start making baby steps toward that goal you over the next 36 months can have that happen where you won't need to work the day job per se because you can segue into your own thing. Um, I can help you guide that if you want, but you have to be more focused as to what that business would be or that practice is. I think you have a really good idea, but it looks like springtime. There's a lot of doors that are going to start opening for you, so go for it. All right. Thank you, Herman. Linda, do you still practice epidemiology? No, no, that would definitely was clinical. And I mean, in my work, I can analyze things, or I love looking statistically. Epidemiology is actually the, the study of epidemics and statistical analysis. Like 59% of all female who smoke would end up with some type of cancer. You know, all the stats. That's really what epidemiology is. I went beyond with, uh, like, getting into alternative methods, healing, which I discovered on my own, the channeling, and then with the integrative health, with the products that I've gotten into, like, you prove promote a lot of products on the show as well because there are a lot of wonderful ways to heal and cleanse the body you know for weight loss That's and liver so and cleanses so, yeah just bring it all together it's still health Psy- it's psych- psychically covid in that wuhan lab is that where it came from <laughs> <laughs> Do you really want me to go on the air? I don't think that's a good, I don't know, am I allowed to? I don't know. I, I'm going to say probably man-made. I don't think it's, you know, COVID, the coronavirus has been around for eons. It's not new. It's not new. And I remember even, gosh, I, during lockdown, I was watching an old, old episode of House on TV, one of the old reruns. They were talking about the coronavirus on TV, and it was produced, what, in 2012 or something. It's not new. It's not new. And we have the colds all the time. I, I have my opinion. I don't want to get in trouble. I understand. I Linda, get out your toll-free <laughs> number again. Give us, give us your toll. 888-509-1077. But, yes, if you're going to need to be protected, protect your health. Of course, you want to stay healthy. Without health, you have no life. It's quality, right? How backed up are you with appointments? Um, enough that I can get everybody in, like over the next few weeks or a month or so. I'm not. I'm backed up enough that I keep it always moving. It's not like years down the road. No, I don't do that. All anymore. right. Thanks, Linda. Keep in touch. Linda Selvin, her website, linked up at coasttocoastam.com. For Dan Galanti. Jeremiah Harris, Tom Danheiser.
Lisa Lyon, Lex Lonehood, Sean Lottasaur, Stephanie Smith, Chris Burroughs, Tim Banal, George Knapp, and Ian Punnett. I'm George Norrie, somewhere out there on Coast to Coast AM. We'll see you on our next edition. Until then, be safe, everyone.